Hey guys, Joshua Snow here, and I'm back with a new tips and tricks video. I know it's been a while. It's been a crazy summer, fall, and winter so far. Um, but I just wanted to make a quick video about Star Glow. It's something I'm seeing um, done a lot now. I started doing this years and years ago, and I really like the method that I use. It's not, you know, a one-click uh, action or anything like that, but uh, once you get the hang of it, it becomes very easy and sort of intuitive and um, fun, actually. So um, here's an image from Dead Horse Point taken years and years and years ago on a really, really stormy day. So there's some atmosphere happening in the blue hour scene as well uh, already. And, you know, I feel like that's when this effect makes the most sense. But if you do this well, um, you can make scenes that don't have any atmosphere going on feel like they do. So I'm going to toggle this on and off so you can see exactly what I mean. You can see that I haven't done every single star in the sky. I've only chosen the more prominent stars. And I've, I've sort of gone all the way across the scene left to right. And that's for balance. You don't want to just do a few stars over here and then nothing over here. It's also for realism. Obviously, my work is far from realistic, but I want the physics behind what I'm doing to at least be possible. So in this case, um, you know, there was atmosphere going on. So I wanted to make the stars, at least the big bright ones, feel really glowy. And the way I do that is by making a blank layer set to screen. Now, I'm going to put a black... Uh, layer down. It's just a plain black, no blend mode change or anything. And I'm going to duplicate the screen layer because I want to show you an example of what it looks like when you just do a single click with a white brush. So you guys can kind of understand the point of what I'm, I'm trying to get at here. Light does not fall off this abruptly. So therefore the brush at its most softest cannot accurately replicate light fall off. Uh, and therefore you cannot achieve an accurate glow with a single brush click. Uh, even if you change the opacity because you change the opacity of everything. And that's not how light works. When you stare at the sun, when you stare at a light bulb, you see a really, really dense and intense point of light that gradually falls off the further away from the light source you get. Um, that's not what this looks like. This looks just looks like a soft dot. So I want to show you guys how I like to do this in a much more realistic way. I like to start with a brush that is about 10% opacity. So I have changed my opacity to 10% up here. And I like to put the center of my brush right on the center of a star. And I'm going to scale that brush so that it's only about three to five times larger than the actual star. I'm going to make sure that I am clicking and sourcing the color that's immediately around it and making it as bright as it can be. And I'm just going to go center over that again and click once. And then I'm going to increase the size of my brush about three times the size of the previous one. Click again and repeat five or six times until I've got a nice big radiant around that star. Now you can see exactly what that did for us as opposed to 100% opacity right next to it. Big, big, big difference and a huge difference in how realistic this will look over this. So if we turn that layer, black layer back off, we can go around and we can do that to the yellow stars these big giant ones that even have sun flares on them. It's picking a purple fringe, but I'm going to warm that up and brighten it up. And then we're going to repeat the same process. Now, the bigger the star, the bigger the glow. And you can work in reverse too. You can pick your biggest brush, and, oops, I'm sorry, and click once and then reduce the brush size. I'm just using my bracket keys to make them smaller or bigger and so on and so forth. You can do the nebula. You can change the shape of your brush to shape whatever it is you want to enhance. And then we'll do the same thing. Click, enlarge, click, 
enlarge, click, enlarge. Now it's not always the same amount of clicks depending on uh, the light and the darkness that's around whatever it is you're applying this glow to because you're using a blend mode and that interacts differently with different pixels. But that is how I get a much more realistic star glow. So no single layer, uh, no single click with reducing opacity. You don't want it to look like this. Because when you reduce the opacity, you lose that density in the center and then it's lost even more real realism in my opinion. So hopefully you guys will find that informative and you'll be able to use that to much better results than you previously were getting. Thanks guys.